called as obesity. And from an Ayurvedic point of view, uh, this disease um, has existed for millennia. So it, you know how important this is. And it's even more important what um, we'll be talking about in the current day and age about obesity as such. Because if you really look at the statistics about obesity in this country, 64% of all adult Americans are overweight. 63% of all adult Americans are overweight. 31% of all those 64% are morbidly obese. 34%? 31% of the 63%. That's correct. Yeah. It's and and the cost of managing obesity is somewhere close to 150 to 200 billion dollars every year okay it is a rampant epidemic which is engulfing the whole country by storm and there are two main reasons why we are actually having a massive epidemic of obesity number one is our sedentary lifestyle which has suddenly become too luxurious and too sedentary and uh, not having enough physical activity and movement and a physical routine structure routine which is responsible for burning things what we take in and the second the quality of the foods what we find and are getting are devoid of healthy calories and are full of empty unwanted calories which we don't have time or we don't have ways to burn that. So it is coming from unhealthy foods which are available, which are readily available starting from the elementary school to all the way to any fast food places. We are going with that easy amount of food which we are buying from supermarkets which is absolutely devoid of nutrition and it is creating epidemics of these um, uh, weight gains. But the weight gain is not the real, uh, real problem or a challenge. Because of excess weight that you carry, what it creates is it will lead to tendency towards heart disease, tendency towards cancer, tendency towards insulin resistance which would create a type 2 diabetes. And to manage these three main killers, what we have, whether it is stroke, whether it is heart disease, whether it is diabetes, whether it is cancer, Answer, the the efforts what the medical system will put on to people to manage these diseases is going to be enormously high enormously high so just because of the sake of money we'll have to pay attention to this problem how we can deal it more effectively and even even from an Ayurvedic point of view it has been said that Sthaulya or Medorog this these are the terms that have been classically used in Ayurveda Sthaulya and medoro so fat imbalances or issues with the metabolism of the fat and an excessive obesity or weight gain so it is it is classically said and explained that Overnutrition, brimhana, okay, there are two types of diseases that we classify. One is because of santarpana, where you are eating more food than what you need. And the other is called as apatarpana, where you are receiving probably malnutrition or not getting the enough kind of nutrients which is necessary for you. So this is all happening because of something called as santarpana. Actually, uh, sun is, is something which is more balanced and even nourishment, but this is an excessive um, nutrition which is more in the brimhana category where you are eating foods which are going to probably create a sense of bulkiness and overgrowth and excess. So this is an excess disease which comes. So basically it comes from food and lack of physical activity. So there is there's recently, if you are familiar with uh, what Michelle Obama is doing, uh, you should read what the, the paper which was published by the White House about prevention of the epidemic of children's obesity and how to how to deal with it, whether their playtime, restricting their calories and changing the food habits and everything, starting from the school. I think it is a wonderful initiative and uh, it's very rightfully that this is the time to start doing it because uh, uh, it says... <clears throat> It says that by 2050, how much of our population will have type 2 diabetes? Can you guess? Two 
50 percent of every adult will have type 2 diabetes by 2050 if we continue to be on this track okay and we are talking about Prameha, Madhumeha, overweight, obesity, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, you name it. This is a, a very vague symptom where you are carrying an excess 20, 30 pounds on your frame, which is going to slowly crumble the normal functioning of your cells and tissues. So normalization of the weight is one of the most important factors in medicine now. And so uh, are you eating well? Are you within the close range of your normal weight. They use this term called as body mass index, isn't it? And the body mass index is based upon your height, weight, age, and um, uh, <clears throat> some other markers along with that. But in general, in spite of different body constitution, you need to understand that if you are having a normal weight, so-called, what it will do in order to the normal functioning of the vital organs in our body. And those vital organs could be brain, could be heart, could be liver, could be Kidneys. And so all of these vital organs will be pressurized because of the onslaught of these unwanted bags of fat and water that you will carry in your system. And so they have also correlated anyone who is trying to embark on to a normalization of the weight program. There are so many side benefits into their vital organs that they will get in terms of their productivity at the work, in terms of happiness of their relationship, in terms of uh, functioning of their heart, lung, liver, kidney, those areas, as well as being more successful in life. So, if at all you are feeling yucky, dull, heavy, groggy and toxic because of the excess weight you are carrying, this is exactly what you are going to attract in your life because the way your body and mind feels, the way uh, you will be attracting things in your life. Uh, in order to be a uh, little bit more successful and be more open and be more optimistic and active and um, <clears throat> positive about the outcome of life, you will have to change your body to change your life. And this is an age-old dictum. I'm not making it up. I'm not telling you because it is, it is something that is said that it is called as nindit purusha. Nindit means it's almost cursed upon or frowned upon or something which is a karmic limitation which happens when you are suddenly going into a stage where you are disfiguring your body and because of that is disfiguring, uh, carrying a sense of guilt, unhappiness, depression, dullness and a whole sadistic outlook to life is, is a real big epidemic. And uh, it, it, it needs medications to, do, to take care of it. Then that medication leads to another medication to take care of it and it's never going to work. So there's a whole range that why we need energy drinks nowadays, five hour energy shots. We, we need something like excess dosage of caffeine because there is hardly any energetic flow happening because the pathways of the body where prana carrying channels are getting clogged and the things are not moving. The cells are not getting the desired nutrients because it's not reaching to the site where it should be going. So you feel completely blocked and toxic and not energetic because of all this. And the remedy is what you do is even more depleting and even more devitalizing. So in general, uh, <clears throat> uh, normalization of the weight and opening the pathways. Um, we talk about the microcirculatory channels which transport nutrient and en energy which should reach to the site of where the ATP manufacturing or the energy release is happening. Whether you're talking about protein, whether you're talking about digesting carbohydrates, ingesting the right kind of fat, it's a balanced quality respecting to your body constitution is the need of the hour. And you as healers, you as practitioners, you have a double responsibility for, for guiding people in the right direction because there are so many diet fads available, okay? Whether it is South Beach diet or Atkins diet or this diet or the tapeworm diet, what you talked about. But um, it, is, it is something where uh, there's nothing right and wrong about it. As at the end of the day, it just boils down to those two words, what we said, isn't it? What were those? Eat less, eat right. And when we say eat less and eat right, it simply means the calories should be really power packed so that they carry nutrients which are good for the whole body. 
okay? They are not empty sugary calories which are going to be good for nothing. They should be vital, they should be coming from the source of nature, you should be eating as close as to the cycles of the nature, eating foods which are made by God, not made by man. And if you are eating less, if you are eating right, and you are leading an active life. Because the double-edged sword is, is whatever you are taking in, it has to be burned properly by using your body. If there is no component of exercise which generates heat, which burns the unwanted fat and digests the excess calories that you have ingested, slowly and steadily your bank balance is going to grow. Okay? Because you are earning more and spending less. <laughs> And it might be good in some other areas of your life, but in this area you are, you are holding these things into the areas which is so bad and then because of your holding so much, it's going to be a strain on my bank balance because you and me and our tax dollars are going to be spent on taking care of those people who were not taking care of themselves. Did you read this article in Time magazine? It was a cover story, the high cost of cheap foods. You should read that. You should read that. It says for a dollar menu, what you buy it at Burger King's or Taco Bell or McDonald's, for one dollar menu, you spend hundred and forty-nine dollars in healthcare costs for that person. For one hamburger. For a one-dollar menu, whatever you buy for one dollar in these fast food places, yours and ours hundred and forty-nine dollars will be spent for that person to take care of whatever good or bad things are going to happen from that food to them. So it is, it is insane the way if we look at that how we eat foods which are toxic, yucky, nasty and how we create that because we talk about it in the Ayurvedic angle that it is, it is because of the sluggish metabolic activity that you are not burning things at the same speed and the rate what you should be and your eating habits which is di driven by the tongue is constantly happening and your body is the one which is being sandwiched and suffered in between the, the desires of your tongue and inability of your body to handle those foods. So it's a battle. It's an autoimmune bot battle where your body is trying to tell you from every possible way that I can't take it anymore, but you keep on doing it because your tongue wants it to do it. Whether it's donuts, whether it's pizza, whether it's coming from anywhere else. It is at the end of the day whether you can control the desire of doing that thing. And I'm not saying that uh, having some of these things is absolutely wise and bad for that. Uh, I met a person one day and he says that I eat anything I want. Okay, But I have a very clear equation that if I'm going to do this, then this is the amount of time I have to spend um, uh, in my club or in my gym, in my doing exercise or something like that. And if I see that I'm not going to make that today or tomorrow, then I don't do that. And if I feel I can do that, then it's more easy for me. So if both of these things are going hand in hand, where ingestion of the right calories and your ability to burn, and you are burning it with, with a proper interval and a rest to your digestive pathways, you are doing engaging yourself into a state of detoxification, where all the impurities are being purged and cleaned, the channels are much more open. Because of the openness of the space and air, the fire comes up, and then you have a lightning sense in your water and earthy element which is the denser organs in your physiology. We talked about it this morning that as you age from 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 years of age there is a significant dip in your digestive strength. Okay, uh, It becomes a little bit slow and slow and slow and slow sluggish. So every 10 years that you become older you have to reduce at least 15 to 20 percent of the amount of food and the calories that you eat. And it should be commonsensical to anyone. So you reduce the portion. So when you become 50 or 60, you are about eating almost 50 to 60 percent of the food what you were eating in your 20s or 30s. And it's pretty logical and simple that it says that you are respecting your agni and hunger and allowing it to give the same amount of fuel what it deserves and still creates the energy in the body. Because you don't generate energy only from food. That's a, that's a misconception that we think. You generate